This is the Great Vocal Majority Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Great Vocal Majority Podcast. I'm Tony Cotaspati, and this is volume 55 that I'm calling the Democrats, from Alger Hiss to Andrew McCabe. When Deputy Director of the FBI Andrew McCabe was fired for cause by Jeff Sessions on the recommendation of the Inspector General in the Office of Professional Responsibility, that whole incident ignited a wave of vitriol that is spreading. Now, who was the wave? Who did it include? Well, of course, it included McCabe himself, his former boss, former director of the FBI, James Comey, former CIA director, John Brennan, former attorney general, Eric Holder. Now, each of these guys has had problems telling the truth in the past, and quite frankly, their credibility has been called into question on numerous occasions. It's interesting that this elite group of former Obama administration officials felt compelled to publicly expressed their hostility to President Trump in a way we very rarely have ever seen done ever, especially at a moment when President Trump has been arguing how the Obama administration spied on him and sought to sabotage his presidency. It's almost as if Trump goaded them into this kind of reaction, a reaction they were really unwise to make because it tends to confirm suspicions that they were part of a larger conspiracy to undermine Trump. Not that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but it does appear as though that's the case. Now, interestingly, there are some similarities between the reaction to the McCabe firing and the reaction to another major controversy in the past of the Democratic Party. And it was this one. When you go back and look, In the years following World War II, there was a deep-seated fear that Soviet Russian spies had infiltrated our government at the highest levels and were influencing policy, which is not really unlike what's being claimed today, is it? Now, it came to a head when a former Russian spy, a fellow named Whitaker Chambers, basically had a change of heart. He was a spy, but he had a change of heart. He was a communist, but he had a change of heart. He became a religious person. And he was going through this whole cycle of confession, so to speak. And Whitaker Chambers accused Alger Hiss of being a traitor. Now, who was Alger Hiss? We'll get into that. Well, Chambers got the attention of Richard Nixon, who at the time was a congressman and, and obviously from California. And that's when the controversy erupted and became very deeply partisan because Hiss wasn't just a nobody in the, in the federal government. Hiss was a top official in the State Department. He was a New Deal Democrat in the FDR administration. He accompanied FDR to the Yalta Conference with Stalin and Churchill. Now, he didn't play a great, really big role there, but he was there. He was Truman's man at the United Nations Charter Conference in San Francisco in 1945. He served at very high levels of the federal government for a long time for both FDR and Truman. So any accusation of espionage represented a threat, at least politically, to the Truman administration. But not just the Truman administration, the entire Democratic Party. And that's really what Donald Trump represents. Donald Trump represents a threat to the established order, but also primarily to the Democratic Party more than anybody. And the threat was so profound, it was so great, very prominent Democrats rushed to defend Hiss and vouch for his loyalty and patriotism. The Supreme Court justices testified on Hiss's behalf. Presidential candidates for the Democratic Party testified, one of whom was Adlai Stevenson, who eventually became the nominee for the Democratic Party for president twice in 1952 and 1956 after defending Alger Hiss. To Democrats at the time, it just seemed incomprehensible that Hiss was some kind of a Russian communist spy. 
Now, though the controversy did endure for many decades, this remember, this happened in 1948. I think it extended out to 1951 or 52. But from 1951 or 52 all the way through the, the, the early 90s, it was a, a subject of great controversy whether Richard Nixon falsely accused, and of course Whitaker Chambers, falsely accused Alger Hiss of being a spy. But then the Soviet Union fell, and a lot of those KGB files became public. And it was revealed both in Russian Secret Service and KGB documents, as well as in American Intel Agency documents, that Alger Hiss was, in fact, a communist spy right smack in the middle of the Democratic Party leadership. And that was earth-shattering. Now, if you fast forward to the current day, and we see the same kind of reaction out of top-level Democrats with one difference. You see, in 1948, Democrats were genuinely shocked at the accusations against Hiss. They truly refused to believe it. It wasn't like they knew he was a communist and they were defending him. They didn't believe he could possibly be one. In 2018, the people protesting the loudest were in quite possibly in league with Andrew McCabe's efforts to sabotage Trump's presidency. In other words, they're really guilty. And their anger and vitriol is an expression of their potential complicity. I mean, let's just look at these guys briefly. James Comey is guilty of an illegal leak of official government documents which were actually his memos. Those are considered government documents. And he leaked them to a reporter in order to get his mentor and friend, Robert Mueller, appointed special counsel to look into Russian interference, which he knew had to implicate him. Now, Comey is also guilty of lying under oath in congressional testimony where he claimed he never approved or ordered a leak as Andrew McCabe claims he did. So either Andrew McCabe is lying or James Comey is lying. One of them has to be lying. The former director of the CIA, John Brennan, has no credibility either. It was Brennan's CIA that spied on the United States Senate. Senate Democrat Ron Wyden tweeted that the, quote, CIA broke into Senate computer files, then tried to have Senate staff prosecuted. Unquote. When this came up in an interview between Andrea Mitchell and John Brennan, John Brennan flatly denied it and passed and laughed at that, that the notion that the CIA would ever do that. The man lies through his teeth. Brennan lied on multiple occasions under oath in congressional testimony. He lied about drone strikes killing civilians, claiming there were zero civilian casualties when it was widely known that there were dozens of civilians being killed. Now, this was confirmed by the Inspector General's report in the CIA, and Obama's failure to fire Brennan just emboldened Brennan to be even more deceitful. And so it's a bit rich to read Brennan's tweet attacking President Trump. And you know, I'll tell you something else about John Brennan. John Brennan is probably, at least I hope he is, the only CIA director ever to have voted for a Communist Party candidate for president. John Brennan did that. What kind of patriot? votes for a communist as president. Just saying. Then, of course, there's Eric Holder the con and comments from him, the former attorney general. Now, Eric Holder has the dubious distinction of being the only attorney general to ever be held in contempt of Congress, but that's not his only claim to fame. Holder also referred to himself as Obama's wingman. That's a quote. Now, could you imagine when John Ashcroft was the attorney general, if he ever declared himself to be George W. Bush's wingman, what the reaction would be? Or if even today Jeff Sessions were to say such a thing about Trump being Trump's wingman, you wouldn't be able to hold the media down. You just wouldn't be able to do it. You see, that's not what the role of an attorney general is. And Holder was caught in other lies as well, especially before Congress. One of his most famous lies was about his opinion on the, uh, the doctrine of equal protection under the law. If you ever go on YouTube and look that one up, you'll see that 
Holder gave a very squirrely answer to whether he believes in it or not. And the truth of the matter is he does not believe in equal protection under the law. And if you don't believe me, just go and figure it out for yourself. You'll find it. It's just look up his testimony to Congress on that question specifically. But he was caught in a number of other lies. He lied about surveillance of the Associated Press. He lied about surveilling James Rosen of Fox News and even James Rosen's parents. He lied about the gun running operation known as Fast and Furious. He lied about the new Black Panther case where they were guilty of voter suppression and he abandoned the judgment. Now these are the men who are experiencing a deep-seated hostility to President Trump. They are not honorable men. They're just not. Each of them has lied. They all have histories of lying and abusing their power and offices. But through their latest expressions of hatred directed at President Trump, it echoes of times more than a half a century ago when more honorable Democrats put their reputations on the line for a man who turned out to be a communist. It's so funny because when you think about it, here was Alger Hiss, who was correctly accused of being a Soviet agent, and the Democrats jumped out of their chairs to defend Alger Hiss not knowing whether he was guilty or not, but just presuming his innocence just based on his position. And now we have kind of the opposite situation where President Trump is being accused of being a Soviet agent or something like that. But the people who are accusing him are the ones who are guilty of it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, the turnaround. In 2018 now, Comey, Brennan... Holder and McCabe, they don't have any reputations worth defending, worth putting on the line. Unlike the Democrats from 1952 or 51, Comey and, and McCabe and Holder and uh, Brennan, they can't be righteously indignant because they aren't righteous. In 1948, Adlai Stevenson was just a gullible fool. In 2018, McCabe, Comey, Brennan and Holder think the American people are gullible fools. That's the difference. And it's not working, boys. It's not working. For the great vocal majority, I'm Tony Contespati. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and podcast and visit my website, greatvocalmajority.com. Thanks very much. Take care.